Vision of Faith, the television ministry dedicated to bringing you the Word of God from today's local ministries. If you're searching for the truth, look no further. Let's go in now and find out who's bringing the Word of God this week on Vision of Faith.
I want to speak to you from the 95th Psalms. I invite your full attention to this 95th Psalm. Some things I want to say about it that I uh, believe can inspire us and help us. Psalms number 95. Uh, shall we stand for the reading of the word? Let's read together, please. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his. He made it. And his hand formed the dry land. Come, let us worship, bow down, let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pastor, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye harden not your heart, as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Thank you for your obedience. You may be seated. And we want to look at this psalms and glean from this psalm some things that can inspire our hearts. First of all, when we consider the psalms, we think in terms of David who wrote something like 71 of the 150 psalms. He said that others wrote concerning the psalms. There are times when life seems to be out of control, unmanageable. There are times when it seems like life is coming apart at the seams. We all have those kinds of experiences. During these periods and the struggles that we have, if, 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 if we read the Psalms prayerfully and earnestly, they can help us stay focused, yes, yes. and stay focused on the eternal perspective of life. Yes, if we read the Psalms, there is no human experience that is not covered in at, in at least one of these 150 Psalms. You see, uh, we can take a godly, spiritual, heavenly, eternal perspective because of the fact that God works in a mysterious way. Yes, yes, yes. And sometimes he uses that which is seemingly bad for uh, the glory of his name. Yes. And he uses that which is seemingly bad for the good of his people. For the Psalms assures us First of all, that God is sovereign and is still in control. Man is not in control. God is the one who is in control. The psalmist assures us always that all events and situations are according to divine providence and is therefore right on course with God's timetable. There are different types of psalms. There are individual and communal uh, psalms where we express the need for God's deliverance, for God's healing, for God's comfort. And there are psalms that are known as pilgrimage psalms. They, these pilgrimage psalms establish a mood for worship, get us in a frame of mind to worship God. The word worship comes from the root word that means worthy. We worship God because he is worthy to be worshipped. They will, will come when the psalm was written. And then there are wisdom psalms. These psalms here instructs us in God's will. Tell us what God expects of us, what his will is, how to live a fruitful, productive, satisfying, and a competent life. These psalms are wisdom psalms. And then there are psalms that we 
uh, named imprecatory psalms. These are the psalms where God is, is, is asked to bring wrath and judgment against those who are his enemies. Unfortunately, many feel that the psalmist is asking for revenge for himself, but the psalmist was not asking for revenge for himself in these imprecatory psalms. He was asking God, don't let them get by with degrading your name. Yeah. Don't let them get by with taking your grace and your mercy for granted and giving a credit to some, something else or somebody else. Look at them, for they have no fear of God. They have no respect for people. They have no respect for poison or life. And, and, and rise up against them. They continue to hate. They continue to murder. They continue to rape. They continue to rob. They continue to involve in mass shooting. He said, the psalmist said, rise up against them. We can't do nothing with them, but you can do something. The psalmist calls us to share that truth. Isn't it wonderful to know that that God is still in control? I hate to think that man is in control, but God is still in control. No matter how bad it is, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad it looks, God is still in control. And God has his own time picked to bring about an end to whatever it may be that debases and diminishes human living. Every book of the Bible deepens our understanding of our relationship with God, but the Psalms uniquely enrich our experiences. Somehow or another, when we read the Psalm, it seems like we are right in the presence of God. The Lord is my shepherd. No longer belongs to David, belongs to me. It belongs to you. I shall not want. The little boy said, the Lord is my shepherd. His mother trying to teach him how to say that. And he said, the Lord is my shepherd and I know what I want. <laughs> no matter how we put it, we know that God is able to meet every need. His grace is sufficient. He makes life worth living. Every human emotion has its echo in the book of Psalms. And the wonderful message of Psalm, this is the message of Psalm, the 150th Psalm that comprises the book of Psalm, the wonderful message of Psalm is that God cares. Yes. Not only does he care about the external circumstances of our life, but God cares about our everyday reaction to life, various experiences. God cares about how you Respond to life experiences. He cares about how you respond to life when life deals you uh, the gift of pleasure, the gift of excitement, the gift of joy. But he also is concerned about how you deal with life. When life hits you squarely between the eyes. When life knocks you down. When, 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 when life calls you to say, like the writer said, how long is the night? He's concerned about you when life uh, gets to the point where you cry out yourself, weeping endures in the night. But I'm finally having problems believing that joy will come in the morning. God is concerned about how you handle uh, your experiences in life. Maybe you don't have the finances that you desire. Maybe you don't have uh, uh, necess some of the necessities of life. God is concerned about how you respond to the lack of yes, sir. Yes, sir. that you have. Yeah. Can you trust me? Can you wait on me? Can you hold out and hold on? Do you believe that deliverance will come? Yes. Do you believe that I haven't forgotten about you? Yes. Do you really believe what the word of God said? I am your strength. I am your refuge. A very present help in the time of trouble. Do you believe that? Do you believe that all things are working together for good to those who love me? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that nothing can separate you from my love? Do you believe? Jeremiah.
come out when he said, underneath you, God love you with an everlasting love. Yeah. Moses said, underneath you are God's everlasting arm. Yeah. Can you believe that even if I allow you to fall, I'll be there to catch you? Yeah. He, he's concerned about how we, yeah. how we spend our life. And so then, my brothers and my sisters, when we look at verse number one, you look at verse and the psalmist called the congregation to sing praises to the Lord. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. He's calling for worship. He's saying, let us worship God. Let us worship God. What is worship? Worship is the acknowledgement of our dependency on God. R worship is reverence, respecting a holy reverential fear of God, not being afraid of God, but, but, but having a respectful fear of God because we know that he is God and beside him there is no other. We know that he holds the world in his hand. He holds our lives in his hand and God can speak and men live. He can speak and men die. He can declare that it's time for us to give an account of our stewardship and how we live in our life. That's why we have a reverential fear. Now I know that there are many who go around in life as if they got their life in their own hand. As if that they are the king of the bingo game. I understand that. I understand that. But the fact of the matter is that God is still in control. And don't mistake. Uh, God long suffering for God uh, unconcerned. Yes. Uh, the writer said, God is not slack concerning his promise to us, what, but his long suffering. Yes. You see why so much is going on and so many people continue to do what they're doing? It's only because God is long suffering, uh, giving them time to come to their senses. Yes. And when we don't yield, repent, commit, to the higher power, the greater principles, then God has to step in Amen. and bring it in. Yes. Am I helping somebody in here? Yes. God has to step in, you know. So, 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 and so, so the, 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 this, this psalm here, uh, the psalm number uh, 95, is an enthronement psalm. We, we call it enthronement. For it is a call of for God's people to acknowledge that the Lord is a great king above all the other gods. The psalmist called a congregation to sing praises to the Lord. Look what he said. Let us sing unto the Lord. Singing is a natural way to praise the Lord. Let us, he said, sing, but let us make a joyful noise. A loud noise that comes from the earnestness of our heart. Let us make a joyful noise. He tells us what to do. He says things. He tells us how to do it. He says, make a joyful noise. And why should we sing? Why should we worship God? He goes on to tell us we should worship God because he is the rock of our salvation. The strength of our salvation. God is our security. Yes. You want security? It is okay. Buy all state. State farm. But if you want lasting security. True security. That, that goes beyond protecting you from the physical. But protect you from the spiritual. Evil in this life. He said, look to God. Yeah, why should we worship? We should worship because we have fellowship with God, the Father, yes, yes. and his Son, Jesus Christ. Lord. Why should we worship? We should worship because we have received the Spirit of God. We have not been given the spirit of fear. We have the spirit of love and a sound mind. Yes. Somehow or another, deep down within us, that's the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it relates to our human spirit, we know that things are going to be all right. We know that there is a better day ahead. We know that there is something beyond what we can see. 
we know that we got this hope in our bosom that yes, if I trust him and never doubt, he'll truly bring me out. Somehow or another, we know, we just believe it. The world might tell us that we, uh, the, uh, one of the philosophers said, as for man, in his world, there is no hope. But we know that there is hope. We know that there's hope is in the hope that we have is in Christ Jesus. We have hope, and this hope is not like the hope that I hope something good happens. This hope is a certainty that I know that God is in control. I know he's working out. I know that he's bringing history to a close. And I know that we are going somewhere. I know that he is doing something. And I know that these trials and these tribulations are only temporary, but they are designed to teach me something about life. They are designed to solidify my faith in God. They are designed to make me a testimony. Somebody needs to see how a Christian handles trouble. Somebody need to see how Christian handled disappointment, how Christian handled hatred. Somebody need to see how Christian handled those who uh, are not so loving and kind with them. Somebody need to see that. Yes, so then he said, we ought to uh, sing unto the Lord. He is our salvation. Look at verse number two. Look what he said. In verse number two, he said, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. He tells us what we ought to do in first verse. We ought to sing. He tells us how we ought to do it, make a loud noise. And he tells us now why we ought to do it and how we ought to do it with thanksgiving. And make a joyful noise unto him. He tells us. As we come before the Lord, we ought to come joyfully. We ought to come sh shouting, if not in our feet, in our hands, we ought to be shouting in our souls. When you think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he has done for you, that ought to make you shout. When you think about how far he has brought you and how he has kept you. Yes, yes, yes. And he could have pulled the cover back. Yes, yes. But he kept the cover oh, on up yes, yes. until we learn some sense. Yes, yes. You ought to come yes. with excitement. Yes. When you think about where you've been, yes, and you shouldn't have been there, on, and you shouldn't have been with the person you were that with, and yet God has still kept you. He is still using you, still putting a little joy in your life, a joy in your heart. And that ought to cause you to shout. That ought to cause you to feel good. God's been good to you. And I shouldn't have to tell it to you, but unfortunately, it is so that in some cases, other folk got to tell you how good God's been to you. You could have been dead sleeping in your grave. You could have been locked up in jail. Some folks are in jail for doing lesser things than what you've done. And God kept you out of the jail. And when you did get in trouble, God gave you a good lawyer to help you out. You ought to be shouting. You ought to be praising God right now. You went to the doctor and you got all kinds of reports from the doctor. You didn't think you would be here. The doctor told you you would never be here this long, but yet you are still here on the land of the living. You got aches and pain in your belly naked, but you're still here. You ain't nobody in lonesome graveyard. You are still here. And, and, and not only that, it's all that you know and all that you experience, you are still here. Slipping and sliding. Peeping and dying. Still haven't learned your lesson. Still doing some of the stuff that almost took you up. But you're still here. You went back to the drawing board. You didn't stop doing what you were doing, but you went back to the drawing board so you can come up with a better scheme. I'm going to be more careful this time. 
I won't tell Sally this stuff because I told Sally what I did. And she went out spreading it all over town. But I'm not telling her. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping my business to myself. <laughs> But being honest and fair with yourself, when you're talking with some folk and they're telling you how good you are, and when they tell you how they admire you and how you have come from a long way and how you are changed and yet you're still doing some of the same stuff, they're telling you how you change and you listening to them and say, yeah, but if you only knew. If you only knew. If you only knew. Like Martin Luther King said, we're man in a way. Through a great revolution, he said, this, uh, the mistress came up to uh, the servant who was working for her and said, that, uh, well, I heard say that you were getting married. The mistress said to the slave lady, I heard that you were getting married. She said, no, I'm not getting married, but thank God for the rumor. <laughs> Settle for rumor when reality was, I'm not getting married. Yeah. Yet the, he said, tells us how to come. He said, thank, come thankfully. My question to you is, are you thankful? Our first duty when we come before God present is to thank him. Thank him for blessings. Thank him for the privileges of life that life brings. Thank him for the revelation of himself that he has given to us through Jesus Christ. Through Christ we learn that God is love. It is because of Christ we learn that God is savior, that God is helper, that God is deliverer, that God is mighty, that God is compassionate. Through Christ we learn that God is forgiving. You've been watching services from the First Community Antioch Baptist Church in Lutcha, Louisiana, under the leadership of Pastor Ferdinand Gaines, Jr. Join us for worship each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. at 10860 Highway 3125, Luncha, Louisiana, or call us at 225-869-4586. On behalf of Pastor Gaines and all the members, we thank you for watching. Thank you for watching today's episode of Vision of Faith. If there is a ministry that you'd like to see featured, give us a call at 504-515-2284. That's 504-515-2284. On behalf of all of us, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week.